Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon, depending on where you are in the country. Just want to say welcome um, to today's out of home office hours. Uh, this is the advanced session. I'm Scott Fiaschetti of Geopath, and I'm here with, as always, Brian Shopper of Geopath. Uh, hey, everybody. Cool. And so, um, with uh, today's session um, is obviously the advanced session and just to take a couple steps back and do a little housekeeping. Um, so yesterday, if you were on the session, um, we walked through some of the big new uh, features and pieces of functionality that will be coming out soon in the Insight Suite. So hopefully early next week, they're scheduled for release. And um, we want to use today to um, continue our series of uh, the last uh, three advanced sessions coming today, we've been working to try to make sure everybody feels comfortable with the transition from our legacy tools to the new, uh, the new insight suite and the new data. And so that's what we're going to continue to focus on today. And I think moving forward in the next month, we'll probably get back to more of our uh, standard where, where the foundational session is again, similarly focused on the new features and functionality around the Insight Suite, but then the advanced sessions really be starts to become more about the data in general and how to use the data to solve clients' needs and to answer their questions. But we felt it was important to make sure, um, just given some of the questions we've been getting and geek out and things like that, that would be helpful to use these previous uh, sessions to just, again, make sure everybody's comfortable with the new workflows. And so again, that's what we'll focus on today are the, the new workflows. Um, please, as always, um, ask any questions uh, throughout the session. We'll do our best to answer them kind of as, as close to real time as possible so that they're kind of relevant to what's on the screen and, and things like that. And we're happy to hop back and forth if we need to within the, uh, within the tool as we're doing the, uh, the walkthrough. Um, see a lot of new names on the list today so hopefully uh, and some familiar ones as well so hopefully this will be valuable for everybody and again please please um ask questions throughout and that will make sure it's valuable for, for everyone so um just to jump into it what i'm going to do like i would do with these sessions just give a quick high level overview of um, some of the new features that are coming out just in case you weren't on yesterday's session Get a, uh, get a sneak peek as to what's coming up. Um, and again, as I mentioned, hopefully early next week. So the big, the, one of the big things we've been working towards and talking about in our newsletters and things like that are the release of what we're calling Workspace 2.0. So Workspace is the area where you'll find a lot of that um, new legacy functionality in the new Insight Suite. So uh, our old plan functionality is there. So market average planning, um, and that's the, the market plan in the, in the workspace. And then the ADS functionality, which is in the inventory plan area. So some big changes, some really nice user, yeah, user interface, usability uh, improvements that you'll be seeing very soon. And basically, it is about consolidating the workflow into one smooth workflow that cuts across both the market plan as well as the uh, inventory plan. And so here, just a quick screenshot of, you know, this is where you start the, the process. So you add your scenario and you can see here already, if you've already been in the workspace, how that, how the, the user interface has changed and is hopefully much more flexible to what's important for you when you're planning. Um, so again, you can pick your, plan period, your markets, audience operators, uh, media placement, as well as other additional widgets. So thresholds are important for you to add. You can do that. Or specific media attributes like illumination or orientation, you can add that. And you can also customize it. Um, you see the screenshot, things are moved around. So if you plan in a typical flow, you can rearrange the boxes to be set up for what you, how you like to work. And also get rid of, you know, you can click on and off as much as you like as well, certain things, um, and specifically the, uh, the threshold and the other media attributes as well. So I think that's a nice feature. And then in terms of planning, um, you can um, add multiple markets, including a national option is now available as a, as a specific kind of radio button that you can add, add to it or take off. You can add the groups as individuals or group them together. Uh, so if you want to look at a custom market area, which is something we can talk about as well, uh, you can group the five counties of New York City together into the five boroughs, things like that you can definitely do now with the tool. And another um, 
I'm just gonna go back to this slide and stay here and um, talk about this. Another key piece of functionality that you'll be able to do is also, um, you know, if you're planning and you have inventory across multiple markets, one of the, the needs um, to make the workflow a lot easier that we've gotten and will be will be introduced within the next release is the ability to just, I have five different markets I wanna look at. I have inventory that's all grouped together in one plan across five different markets, but I only wanna look at my Boston inventory against my Boston market, my Chicago against my you know, Chicago market, et cetera. So that, and, and then export those individual reports. So that functionality is here and will be released very soon. Um, another thing that's, that's nice now with the plan, so you set up your, your parts of the plan, like again, the market, the time frame and then you don't have to set that up again for the inventory plan or the market plan. You do it and it can cut across all of the, um, all of the, the both plans. So kind of more ease of use. And so um, again, you can add inventory from a number of different ways. And O'Brien will talk about this in a little bit, um, either through a, a template that you can upload, that you can download and use our template or that you, know, you can upload into, our system or a number of different ways. So it's much easier to, to use the uh, workspace and to use that as your main work environment versus even the explore module. Um, so again, it starts to become the, probably the place you, where you may be starting from your workflow much more frequently. So another big thing is the population mapping. So this is something personally I'm super excited about. We get a lot of our geek out requests are around this need to, to map different audiences, different populations, and then overlay inventory. So now that functionality is coming into the works uh, into the uh, insight suite. And it is something that, you know, typically, um, if you've been kind of following along with what, how we've been developing the tool, it's something we, we put out there and we're going to improve upon it. So, um, and so we want to hear how you're using it. What are some of the, um, once it's out there, what are some of the, the workflows that you've come up with? And we can, again, work those into our training and our education as well. So one of the big changes you'll see is that um, the Explore module now is set up slightly different. Um, so there'll be libraries. So you'll have your inventory library, which is essentially the functionality of the Explore module. Now, um, the population library will be where you map your, um, um, audiences and then the places library. So previously that was a separate module that's now in that's now part of the whole explore experience. So there'll be three different libraries, so to speak. I mean, just going a little deeper with the, the population mapping. So you will you know, you start by defining your population and you pick what you want. So right now you can do DMA, CBSA, or county. Um, I know we will get to more granular areas, so zip codes will be coming. It's something we're, we're working on, but again, we wanted to get this tool out to our members to start to use and then kind of iterate on it. But that's definitely, I know that's a pretty frequent question, is our zip codes coming? And the answer is yes. Um, and then again, you can, once you map out your, select your, your geography, you can, again, similar to other parts of the Insight Suite, uh, all audiences are available here. And again, you can map it. And so, so if you want to find what are the top 25 counties where uh, people have been to Starbucks in the past 30 days or have shopped online at a grocery store or something like that, you're able to do that um, with all the different audiences that we do have. And also be able to pick and choose across the set of, like set up a certain set of uh, DMAs or you know you can look across the country and do a map or you can customize it and say I just want to look at these X number of DMAs or counties um, and again this screenshot is showing DMAs and that's because we define DMA up in the top portion of it as well and so if we had selected CBSA it would say national and CBSA instead of DMA and then on the right side you'll see all your copy you know the uh, the different uh, geographies that you selected listed on the right. So this one is showing uh, different um, DMAs for a particular audience. And again, we'll, we'll get into that as we demonstrate the tool. And then ultimately you can save that and use that and go back to it and 
remap that and use it against different audiences. And so again, I know this is something Brian will cover, but ultimately what you're doing is you're saving a set of geographies. You have used your audience, you've used different things to narrow down to that set of geographies, but you're ultimately just saving a list of geographies similar to the way you work in the uh, explore module. So you're, you're ultimately saving a set of inventory and then you can use that and look how it, how things change by picking different audiences and things like that. And then ultimately you can use it to create custom maps for your, you know, for your um, clients as well. And so overlay inventory on that and, and things like that. So um, cool. We'll, we'll talk about that and show you more of how to use that, how to work that into your workflow. Um, but then I also want to make a special note. I, we did a, some sessions two weeks ago um, where we talked about the population activity dashboard. So hope if you've uh, had a chance to work in that tool, hopefully um, you're finding the data useful. Just wanted to make note that that, in that, that uh, functionality will be uh, imported into the, uh, the Insight Suite as well. So you see there, there's a little module there that uh, you can click on and it'll bring you right to the um, right to the, uh, the the mobility dashboard again you can still get to it to the same way you've already been accessing it but just for a little ease of use it's also going to be imported into the uh, into the uh, insight suite itself so want to jump in get to the the meat of the session today Brian, just want to check any questions just before we, we um, hand off and we jump in and uh, start through the walkthrough. Uh, no, I didn't see anything. But again, uh, like Scott said, if anybody does have any questions, please feel free and we can either, uh, you know, go back to something if we need to or we can just stop where we are. Um, so let me just get my screen shared and then. Okay. You able to see my screen, Scott? Can you see that? Yep. Okay, great. Oops, hold on. Let me just give this a refresh. I was messing around in here and I didn't clear my uh, <laughs> I didn't clear my um, activity. Hold on one second. Just as you're doing that, I always find that kind of map really interesting. So it's really easy to just map out inventory across the country if you're, you know, trying to understand a different, um, you know, if a different operator has inventory in certain places, you can easily just click a click them and have it map out and you just get a nice little bubble of, uh, um, you know, a bubble map of where inventory is across the country. Yeah, that's, it is always interesting to see that. Uh, okay, so now that I've got that, I've got that all cleared up. Um, so for anybody who's been in the uh, Insight Suite before, if you're at all familiar, um, or if you were on yesterday, um, you may notice in, in the Explore module here, we now have this floating purple button. Um, and this is showing me if I hover over, it, hover over it, it says the inventory library. Uh, let me just open this up so we can talk a little bit about these first. Um, so I'll probably say this a bunch of times today, probably too many times, but I want to drill it into everybody's head just so they all know. Um, the inventory library is the Insight Suite and the Explore module as you're probably used to it. So by clicking inventory library, I can use the Explore module as I've been using it. Um, the places library down here, I'll switch to it really quick. Uh, this is just a migration of the places module. So the places module, if you're familiar, uh, it was over here on this bar as a separate module. But what we did is we just kind of moved it over here to be a places library. So it works a little bit more uh, seamlessly with the explore module as a whole. Um, and you'll notice actually, uh, you know, as I go back and forth between these different libraries, there are some similar looking tabs across the top here. Um, and the same is said when we switch to the population library, which is the population mapping that Scott was just talking about. Um, so yeah, as this is loading up, you can see we've got some kind of familiar looking tabs across the top to find population, filter selection, layers and display options. Um, and right now we're just looking at here, you can see over here, total population zero plus by DMA. Um, so let's, let's start digging into this. Let's take a little bit of a look here. Um, so first, what I want to do, I want to go into the Define Population tab. Um, and here I can actually, uh, as Scott mentioned, I can explore any of those 8,000 plus variables that we have uh, and uh, apply these as an audience map here. So um, in looking around, I was just sort of uh, putting together a scenario for today. And I realized that there's this kind of unlocks a new, new workflow that hasn't really been uh, available just until this point yet. Um, and so just kind of 
for example's sake, say you're working with a client and they have a few, uh, a few markets in mind for where they might want to launch their campaign or, or something like that, but they're not totally sold on what market because they don't know too much about it yet. Um, I found that when I was going through and, you know, looking through this, this would actually be a great place to start with that conversation. So, um, for example, sake, let's say I'm looking for quick service restaurants. That's the, uh, it's something to do with that. Oops. Um, and let's say I just want to go for this top quintile, quintile number one. Uh, let's hit apply and we'll see this just at the DMA level uh, at first. Okay, so we can see now we're looking at all the DMAs in the in the US uh, for that audience, the quick service restaurants quintile number one. Um, again, right now we're being broken down by DMA, but if I go to the defined population, or sorry, yeah, defined population and then this define by drop down, I can actually change the market size here. Um, and then once I've done that in this assign market function right here, it'll give me the uh, it'll give me the DMAs to choose from uh, based on, or it'll give me uh, options to choose from based on whatever my designation was there. Um, but just looking sort of nationally right now, we can see we've got uh, over here some composition percentages, and these are right now ranked high to low, but we can rank low to high, or we could also go based on the index, which you can see is just right here to the side of these little graph things. Um, but like I said, say I have, you know, I'm working with my client. They don't really know what market they want to go to. They just know, you know, we want heavy QSR eaters. So let's do that. Uh, so one of the things that I was looking through and uh, I thought might be useful to do is you can use this drop down over here to actually just select uh, similarly how you can select inventory based on a metric. You can select the top 25, 50 or 100 geographies here based on whatever your metric is. So, um, for example, I've got this uh, quick service restaurant. So you can see here now the top 25 DMAs based on this. Um, let me just get a little bit closer. Um, and so you can see how these kind of break down uh, percentage wise and also index wise. Um, so the one of the things that I was looking through in here, one of the markets that I was actually considering was Houston. So, you know, in this sort of larger workflow, this might be a great place to come and sort of figure out the market even before you start with anything else. So, um, you know, maybe in my head, this just kind of confirms, I do want to use Houston as my market. Um, so before I move on from this, just a couple more things that I wanted to show sort of before we work away from this. Uh, like Scott mentioned, you have the ability to now save these geography sets. So uh, if I'm happy with this top 25 geographies here, um, I can come down to the little save icon in the bottom and just hit, uh, oh, sorry, one second. I can just hit the uh, save icon and give it a different name uh, or name it whatever I want. Um, so it's important to note though, Scott mentioned this a little bit earlier, um, when you save a geography set, it's no longer representative of the metric or the audience that you saved it with here. So for example, once I save this, this top 25, um, it's no longer representative of this QSR audience or this QSR population, it's just this group of inventories. Um, and then from there, once I have, or sorry, this group of geographies, and once once I had it saved from there, I can run these same geographies against any other uh, any other population in here. But it's just saving the geography group as a group, sort of regardless of what the population was when you saved it. So just so everybody knows. Um, okay, so I just wanted to make note of that really quick. So again, maybe Houston was one of the markets that I was taking a look at. Um, so from here, let's jump over to the workspace module and take a look at some of those new features. Um, so I want to start with a market plan. Um, so I'm going to make, I think I actually did make a new project. Let me see. Um, that's okay. We'll make a new project. So uh, we'll call this Houston QSR. Not even close to Houston. Look at that. Houston. Okay. Create project. Um, and again, if anyone is familiar with uh, the workspace module at all, uh, so far this has probably looked as you would expect it. Um, and it's not really until we actually get into a scenario that you're going to see a majority of these changes. But let's just make this and we'll call this example one. And create scenario. Okay. So there's a lot of stuff going on here. Uh, and if this is your first time Seeing this, this might be some new stuff to, to take in. Um, but basically what this is all set up as 
is just a way to create parameters and filters that are the same between both your market plan and your inventory plan. So um, for example, you can see here, if I scroll down, we've got our market plan tab, our inventory plan tab, and the places tab, just as we did when we were in a scenario before. Um, but now we have this sort of harsh line here, which we can call above the fold or anything we want really. But basically everything above this line, any of these filters and any of these parameters now apply to both a market plan and an inventory plan. Um, so basically, you know, ideally I can come in here, learn about the market that I'm going to look in or that I've chosen to look in. And then I can just go right over to the inventory plan using all the same stuff I set up and just run some scenario or run some inventory and actually run some reports based on these exact filters. Um, so let's take a look. Let's start. Let's see. Um, so you can see here, there's a lot of, a lot of different filters here. I think uh, Scott mentioned this earlier um, that this is a really modular kind of system up here. Um, and it's really uh, customizable to how you want it. So if I just hit this uh, little pencil icon, not only can I drag things around and rearrange, but I can also resize things by dragging. Um, and I can also add additional things. So I can add a threshold filter and I can add media attributes if I wanted. Um, and so these are all just different filters that you can use when setting up your project. You don't necessarily need to use all of these. Um, so I'm just gonna remove these two. I don't necessarily need them. Um, and this is kind of a mess, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to, uh, rearrange it, but so, oh, maybe I will just a little bit, but we'll just drag these two over here. So it's all on this side at least. Um, so I'm just going to go through and set this up as if I would set up any other market plan as I was coming through here. So I want, let's say I just want one week, um, operators, I'm going to leave everyone cause I'm going to look at the market as a whole, um, audience. We can go ahead and find my QSR audience in here. Um, I apologize for the typing. It's probably pretty loud, but uh, let's see. Here we go. First quintile, add that one. And I don't need my person zero plus. So I'm just going to remove that. Uh, location, I'll leave it as it is. Um, actually, no. Location and market, those are kind of two different things. Uh, location, I think you can get down to a zip code level. Um, but for market, I want to add, let's see, it was Houston DMA. So let's add that. Houston DMA. Uh, again, I'm not going to, oh yeah, this is a, this is an important filter uh, to make mention of actually. Um, so uh, you've probably heard me say this if you've ever sat in in one of these sessions before, but um, when you're signing a market in the Insights Suite, you're basically uh, doing two functions at once. You're sort of geographically filtering. So in my instance here, by selecting Houston, Texas, I'm geographically filtering out everything that's outside of that DMA. So only the geographic units inside the DMA. But I'm also setting my in-market versus out-of-market audience here. So um, basically, I'm just saying anyone who lives within the Houston DMA is my in-market and anybody else is out-of-market. And this pop-up here is basically just confirming that you are agreeing to do that. So it's basically saying, do you want to filter your geography and your inventory to the same thing? Like basically what I just said there. Um, and you can see I put my location here as Houston. But um, and then finally, media and placement. I want to go and just pick my media type. And for this one, let's do, uh, we'll do posters for this. Um, and there are a lot of different ways that you can actually get to your uh, filter using all of these different media types here, or media type filters here. I could go by media class, so I'll let this load. But media class is uh, roadside or place-based. Um, and this also updates to be reflective of whatever your market is. So right now, it's only going to show me uh, inventory that appears in Houston. Um, but I'm going to go down to operator media name and I'll select posters from here. Um, just as a little tip, uh, and this is something we're actually uh, working on a little bit more to sort of uh, make this a little bit more clear when people are going through. Um, but if you're ever in here and you're trying to find your media type and you're having trouble finding it, I would suggest taking a look in the operator media name filter because uh, this is where a lot of standardized operator fed names are. So um, if you're looking for something and not finding it, you might find it here. Um, but I'm just going to add posters as my single media type. Uh, let me just review everything. So I've got my QSR audience, all operators, one week, Houston, posters. Okay. Um, and then from there, uh, if you remember in the market plan before, we had the same sort of planning goal here. So we could select based on TRPs, uh, targeted market impressions, or percent reach. But I'm going to do TRPs, and we'll say uh, something low. We'll say 15 is all we want. 
um, and effective reach one allocation method will leave as equal. So now that I've got everything set up here as I need it, basically all I have to do is hit generate plans. And then from market plan to inventory plan, there's really nothing else that needs to change. I don't, I don't change anything other than switch over to the next tab and we'll get there. But um, so basically just saying, you know, once you set all of this, it's set for both your market plan and your inventory plan, which is a really handy feature. Um, hey, Brian. Oh yeah, you have a question? Um, well, no, just a couple points I wanted to make, you know, just I wanted you to kind of set up the plan like you, like you had all set up and just thinking about as we're, you know, just um, guessing at some questions that people might have in their head uh, and just also want to point out a few different things. So looking at the legacy tools versus the kind of new functionality, just I know I want to make special um, point out especially that, you know, previously in the, um, the old tools, you know, the universe was 18 plus and or five plus that you could choose. So I just want to make sure like everybody's aware of, again, I know we say this quite a bit, but the universe is all person zero plus. And if you want 18 plus or five plus, you know, you can definitely select those as targets fairly easily or 21 plus. So I want to make that point. And then also I know we often get a question about being able to set up customized markets. So again, you can do that by- Oh, sure, yeah hearing up the, the customized market. So I know oftentimes we get maybe people so want to look at county the or something. Of, you know, a frequent one is like, how do I look at the five boroughs of New York City or something like that. So you can definitely do that and create your own custom market and save that. And you could do it every time in a tool or if you want to, you can, um, you know, set that up as your uh, saved template of a project or if there's a specific set of media that you go to often, you can save, you know, you can have that in as a saved set of inventory that you always go to and start from. So you can use this a lot of different ways, um, just trying to make, uh, help everyone understand, like if there's, even if there were certain things that were maybe um, like the custom markets that were, were you're not seen as obviously in here, you can definitely do that. Um, that was mm -hmm. it. Um, yeah. So another, another thing as you're getting to and talking about the inventory, I know previously you could only, um, the old tools like work within uh, a limitation of 300 spots, I believe. And now there's a limitation of 6,000, which is hopefully more than enough for any plan that, that anybody's working on. So um, just a couple of differences in the workflow that are hopefully improvements in the workflow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, those are great points. And actually one point to something you said earlier, um, with the universe. Um, so just a tip for anyone, anytime you're in the insight suite and you see total audience, that's always against person zero plus, just to sort of reiterate what Scott was just saying. Um, so anytime you see total, it's against person zero plus. Um, so let me, uh, let me open up. Uh, oh, I saw a question actually just roll in uh, about specific start and end dates. Um, you can do that. This this little button right here, this specific button. Um, but because I'm working inside the version of this that's not yet pushed live, I just can't show you that. But um, yeah, so the if you wanted to do some specific start and end dates to your campaign, you would just switch in this plan period here to specific, and then it'll give you um, basically a little widget thing that you can pick on a calendar, uh, the start and the end dates. And, um, and I believe you can actually go like 39 years out into the future if you wanted. So you can make a pretty long campaign. And uh, also too, as you're um, getting into the inventory plan, you will be able to set specific start and end dates. I'm sorry if you said this already, Brian, but even by by um, spot. So if there's certain units that you want to run and then other units, you know, they stop and then other units start, um, you can you can also do that within the plan as well now. Mm-hmm, totally. Um, so uh, yeah, to jump back into this market plan here, so, um, it looks like it finished running my, my, my market plan. So let me just open it up. Okay, so required spots, it's selling me 12. So just to sort of sum this up for everyone, uh, basically this is telling me in the Houston market, I would need 12 posters to get my 15 TRPs against this audience here, um, or about 12 posters. Um, and this is really all I wanted to do with the, uh, with the market plan. This is kind of all I needed to know. Like, okay, I need about 12. Maybe I'll get some more and I'll see how that does. Um, and if I open up this operators dropdown over here, I can see um, all of the operators that have this kind of uh, inventory type in this market as well. Um, 
So from there, I, I'm, I've got, you know, a number about 12 that I know I need. So let's head over to the inventory plan and actually start to look at some real numbers against some units. And again, you know, uh, everything up here stays the same. I don't need to make any changes, but if I want to, I can add some additional filters or really anything else. Um, so you can see now we switch over to the market or sorry, to the inventory plan. Um, my audience carried over, my market carried over. Um, this looks a little bit different at first view. If you're familiar with the inventory plans, look, this is a little bit different at first. Um, but so the next step after this would be to add some inventory. Um, and there are a couple different ways that you can do that. So let me show you this sort of the ways that are existing right now uh, in the in the workspace module. So uh, I clicked on the add inventory button over here. And when I do that, there's three options within this of ways to add inventory. Um, you could add it from a from a CSV file. Um, and actually, uh, we have a template here if you wanted to download that way it matches uh, matches in perfectly. But um, Basically, all you need in your CSV file, and I think all that comes in this uh, in this template right here, is just a column with spot IDs, a column with a start date, and a column with an end date. Um, and that kind of goes back to that other question about, you know, how can you have specific start and end dates? Um, you could add them up in this plan period box, but you can also, if you have a CSV, you could upload them that way. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um, once I've, you know, if I've done this and I upload a CSV file, um, on the next screen after this, it'll give me uh, a place to sort of match out the headers. So, you know, a match ID to ID and then start date to start date. So um, basically it'll do that and then it'll upload your, um, it'll upload your inventory based on that. But then another way you can go is based off your saved inventory sets. And I could add one or many if I wanted. Um, and then finally, I can add based on spot ID. Um, and I could either paste in Geopath spot IDs or operator spot IDs. And the system is really good about this if you're in like an Excel sheet or if you're in an email, um, it kind of doesn't matter really what the format is. It's, it's pretty good about parsing them out. So um, yeah, you can just paste those right in here as well. But uh, additionally, part of this uh, Workspace 2.0 redesign is this new button, this add inventory from filters. And basically what this is going to do is it's, it just looks at the filters and the parameters that I set up here. And it'll basically pull all existing inventory that meets these parameters. Um, and so that's a really great sort of workflow. If I'm, you know, if I've come to the market plan here, I know I need about 12, um, you know, before, if I wanted to go find some inventory, I might have to go to the explore module and look around that way. Um, but if that's not really how your, your workflow works or how your mind works, you can just jump right here to inventory plan now, and you can just hit add inventory from filters. And this will basically just give you all existing inventory in the system against, you know, based on these filters. Um, and you don't ever really have to leave the workspace module if you don't want to. You can, once these load up, you can filter even further, you can net them down. Um, so we'll give this a couple, this, this is gonna take a second, but um, especially since we're looking at the whole state, or so the whole DMA actually. I think I remember when I was setting this up, I went back and I added an additional, oh, it's not too bad actually, 1400 units or spots. So let's take a look. Um, I, I was going to say, I think I went and I added an additional filter to lower this number, which I will do to show you how you can update your um, filters at any time, really. Um, but once this loads in, I'll just kind of give everybody a sense of what this looks like. Um, I'm going to take a pause. Oh, here we go. Don't even need to. So you can see now, as I scroll through, we've got stuff from every operator who has uh, inventory that exists of this type in this market. Um, you can see we've got sort of a top level here of, you know, number of spots, total impressions, target impressions, but then we have some summary metrics down here, um, you know, total impressions or total target and market impressions, target impressions, uh, we've got reach, uh, but in, additionally, if I hit this customize columns button, uh, I can add tons of different metrics in here. There's a lot of stuff that is available that's not in here by default. Uh, you can add any or all of these columns to your report. Um, but it's important to note if it's not added to your columns here, it won't export when you export it. Just so you know. Um, uh, and just but, one, just sorry, okay. just one quick best practice to um, the frequency. I know is often a metric people want to look at. Yeah, that's one that's not automatically there, but it is available. So you probably may want to uh, just set that up for yourself uh, before you end. There we go. Targeted market frequency was hidden. I had trouble finding this yesterday when you did the session. I wanted to show that and I just couldn't find it. Um, so here, I'll give that a second to let that load up. There we go. So uh, the sort of cumulative frequency for the whole plan, you can see that here. 
Um, and again, uh, if it's not in your columns here, it won't export when you go to export. Um, so just another best practice here, always save your uh, scenario in this scenario button up here, the save scenario button. Um, so that was just, uh, this is just kind of looking at the whole DMA, but say I wanted to add some additional filters, you know, I, I wanted to get some other things in here. Let me add this media attributes uh, and let me add thresholds as well. As well. So say, for example, I only wanted, um, I only wanted units that over indexed for my, for my target, I could do that and I could set it as, I guess, 101, but I'll put it as anything. Um, so you could set that, you could set target and market impressions as a thresholds, either minimum or maximum. Um, but for something like this, say maybe I wanted to add maybe like a directional filter or something. So maybe just east facing, I could do something like that. And then uh, I could just hit add inventory from filters and then replace existing. And this will now just update this to pull all of the ex uh, existing inventory that meets my specifications now. Um, and this is a really handy way to go about actually, you know, utilizing the tool. You don't necessarily have to jump between modules if you don't want to. Um, so it's, yeah, it's a really handy feature being able to do that. Um, so let me just let this load up. Oh yeah, let's see. Looks like setting an east facing uh, filter cut this down by quite a bit. So we're going to be looking about 314. Um, if you can remember my plan goal or my TRP plan goal was 15. The market plan said I only needed about 12. So um, I guess what you could do from here is you could, uh, well, I'll, I'll talk. Oh, okay. I was going to talk while this loaded, but it's here. Um, so what you could do now is you can go through and you could deselect all of them and select specific ones if you want based on either their numbers or um, you could save them as an inventory set and then hit save as new set. And then if you wanted to, you could actually bring these into the explore module and load up that set and see where these fall in the market if that's a deciding factor as well. So there's kind of a lot of different things that you can do sort of once you've added your inventory from these filters. Uh, it makes it really easy and really, uh, really intuitive to sort of get to a smaller group from here. Mm -hmm. um, and just yeah. um, just to, uh, I think the, the pointer, I don't know if I don't recall if it was a specific question um, earlier, if you want to, even in this view, you can start to set up within the tool different um, time frames for the specific. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me see if I can find those columns. columns. And that's where you would start to do that. Or if you wanted to, you could even upload the, the, the um, that information into uh, into the the uh, inventory plan using the the template that we that we do have. So it's in here somewhere. I'm having trouble finding it just because I don't want to waste anybody's time. But yeah, it is a column that you can add, as Scott just said. Um, yeah, and as you know, as Scott mentioned, you can get really specific with start and end dates for your campaign. Uh, you know, every single every single spot in your campaign could have a different. Uh, a different length and a different start and end date uh, than each other if you wanted. So there's a lot that you can do with this. Um, so I'm just, again, save scenario is always good practice. Um, and, you know, if say I'm happy with this, say I want to export this to Excel and maybe that's where I want to do my selections or something like that. Um, if you want to export your scenario, you just go up to the export scenario button and then export as CSV. And I believe uh, now that they are all together like this, now that our filters all work for the market plan and the inventory plan, I believe that when you hit export, you get a CSV file for the market plan. So basically it'll look, I think it'll look just like this. It'll basically show you exactly this uh, once it's expanded. So you'll get this as one CSV, then you'll get everything that's in the inventory plan as a CSV. And I believe if you've added any places to your plan, it'll export those as a separate CSV as well. So um, now that everything's together here, it makes it really easy to sort of do a couple things at once, which is really exciting. Um, were there any questions that we had uh, up until this point so far? Um, no, not, nothing, um, nothing major. Just a couple, couple of quick questions on like, will this uh, webinar be available offline and things like that? Oh yeah, Is yeah, for, uh, for absolutely. The the session from yesterday is actually up uh, already. It's on our uh, on our website. If you go to the Geek Out tab and scroll to the bottom, I believe, mm -hmm. and then it's also on our YouTube channel. Um, and this will this will do the same. I'll I'll upload this later today as well. Okay. Um, so a couple more things that we still got. Oh, sorry, we saying something. I, I do recall that. I apologize. Seth. There was another question too about the six thousand uh, limit. 
question was, is that for exporting only or for importing too? And the answer is um, in, in both importing and exporting is the, the maximum. Right. Um, okay, yeah, and if anybody else has any other questions as we're uh, kind of going through some other things here, please feel free to, to send them in. Um, since I still have some time here, there's a couple things I wanted to show. I didn't know if I would get to it, but um, let me go back a little bit. Uh, Scott, a little while ago, you actually mentioned, uh, you know, there are some things you can do if you have like, I think I actually made a perms, like a permanent, here we go. Yeah, I did. I made a project for perms. So say there's a, you know, uh, a set of, an, a geography set or a, a, um, a, an area that you want to save as a custom market that you might use a lot, like New York City's five boroughs, for example. What I did here is I just came and I, I made this project that was just for perms like this, perm templates, I guess. Um, so this one specifically, I just, I made a new scenario. I added the five counties that are in New York City uh, together here. Let me actually, this is pretty handy actually. I can use that uh, pencil feature and I can drag this down. We can all see now. Um, but yeah, I can, you can see I added these five counties. They're here together as a group. So this is my market now. This is, you know, the city of New York as a count or as a, as a geography. Um, so that's one way that you could use, you know, a, a blank template like, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, 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 sorry, I didn't mean to speak over you. Sorry, uh, and you could use that as a starting point each time because you yeah. can copy that scenario. Yep, right over here. Before you start doing anything, you just say duplicate scenario or even at a bigger level, you can duplicate the project however you yep. want. So you can always start from that if there's a set of, like Brian's saying, a set of geographies or a set of uh, inventory that you always sell certain packages or want certain packages put together, you can create those and have them at the ready and just put set up a, a templated project or scenario and just always keep starting from that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and same thing with this one too. I didn't, I didn't finish this one, um, but I went to start setting this up. But basically say I wanted, you know, if, if I always package a certain inventory type together, maybe all the benches or a handful of benches in Atlanta or something that I put together often and I use pretty often. Um, I can, excuse me, I can just make a, uh, a scenario exactly like this with those inventory sets load up, loaded up and then really nothing else added. So it's just the inventory saved. And again, you can just go and duplicate that <clears throat> and have that be your starting point. And yeah, it works really well like that. Um, there was actually, there's one more thing I wanted to show, and I'm, I'm glad we have the time to. Um, when we were uh, sort of exploring the, oh, I lost my mouse, there it is. When we were uh, talking about the uh, population library and the ability to map out populations, um, there was actually something Scott and I were talking about earlier, and it was a suggestion that somebody had mentioned uh, of sort of an, a workflow that might be helpful to see or something in the future uh, that would be helpful. Um, and I wanted to sort of demonstrate that here. Um, and again, as Scott said, this is kind of the, this is the first iteration of this. And as with everything in the Insight Suite, you know, it just is kind of point one of many. So it's it's really exciting to see where this might go. Um, but so let me just, oh. Okay. No, no, yeah, I, was, yeah, I was just gonna jump in and say, we definitely wanna hear your ideas on how to use it or different workflows you'd like us to try to demonstrate. So definitely, you know, as you're starting to get into this tool once it's live, you know, please reach out and please, you know, please ask us questions because it helps helps inform these webinars and makes them more valuable for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, like I said at the beginning, I, I said I would probably say this too many times, but I'll say it one more. Um, to get back to sort of the default view of the Explore module, it's this inventory library here. And so I just want to explain a little bit about what I did before I jump into it. Um, so the idea was, you know, is there a way to map out a population and then uh, pick some inventory based on you know where they fall in the highest indexing areas or something to that effect basically you know can I map out a population and then pick inventory based on how that population map looks um, and not quite but I, I kind of put together something that I think might be uh, a little bit of a workaround to do something like that right now and also hopefully what we can achieve with this at some point in the future but so I just came into the uh, inventory library here. I went and I found some inventory sets for, um, I think the audience was those who've shopped online for groceries in the last 12 months. Um, I figured that was kind of an appropriate thing since everyone's stuck inside. 
Um, so I saved that as an inventory set. Oh, this was in uh, the state of Connecticut, by the way, sorry. So I went and I uh, added together all the counties that make up Connecticut, just like how I showed with uh, those five counties that make up New York City. But I added together those five counties and then I looked at all the inventory in Connecticut. And I think I picked the top 100 based on those who have um, ordered groceries online. And so uh, what I did is I went and I actually mapped out the same thing as a, as a population uh, map here. So um, here, I can show you how I did that actually. I went to uh, a sign market, or I first set this to county. And the reason I'm using Connecticut is Connecticut only has eight counties that make up the whole state. So it was a nice easy way to sort of do a statewide look. Um, so I can switch over to county and I can go CT and then I can just add all the ones here. Um, I think it's cutting off, but um, so you can see I've, I've got my saved geography sets here. So um, I have the whole state of Connecticut saved, but then I have the top three counties based on that same audience. So I went and I found that same online, uh, online grocery shopping audience. Uh, I mapped it out for the whole state of Connecticut. And then I just saved those top three just to see, you know, I wanted to look at just kind of the highest index incomes. Um, oh, you know what, this is still showing my uh, quick service restaurant audience from earlier. So let me switch the population really quick. But basically the whole, the whole point of this is I just want to see, you know, it, because these are the top, um, um, because these are the top uh, counties for this population and I have these, the inventory set of the top inventory, I'm just curious where they kind of overlay, you know? Um, so that was kind of my thinking here. I just wanted to see, you know, once I have this set, so this should switch my map here. There we go. That's what it should look like. So this county was the, the highest. So I've got that now, um, you know, I saved my inventory set when I was working with the inventory library. I've got these three counties mapping out the population here. Um, so say you've got, you know, you're in the population library, you've got your, your population mapped out and you want to add some inventory over top of that. Um, if you have saved something as an inventory set already, you can come to this layers and display options tab. Um, and then just as it is in the main view of the explore module, you have all your available layers. And these are on the right side is where I'll put my selected layers. Um, and you can also customize what the map looks like, turn on and off some certain map settings. Um, but let me just find this, uh, let me just find this, because I, I did this earlier and it was a pretty interesting, I think. Yeah, there it is. So uh, let me, uh, hold on, let me just minimize this. Uh, I'm trying to make this not purple. We'll make it, we'll make it green, or let's make it yellow. That's kind of complimentary. Oh, <laughs> I freaked it out. It'll be gray for now. Hold on. <laughs> I think I can fix it later. I had this problem earlier. Um, but let me just let these load up. So basically, this is just going to, yeah, let me see if I can get this to be not gray. There we go. Let's try that. So as this is loading in, this is basically just that inventory set of top 100 units for this uh, grocery, the same grocery audience that I'm looking at here. Um, and it's, you know, kind of not surprising that they all, <laughs> most of them all fall in this, uh, in this county here, but um, it looks like it's probably around Stanford, but uh, I don't know. It's just interesting. I thought this was an interesting thing to sort of take a look at. It was kind of a, I don't know, a, a workaround for the same idea, but um, I don't know. I thought it was an interesting thing. So uh, if there's anything like this, you know, thoughts, thoughts or workflows that you think might be interesting to see or be really helpful, um, like Scott said, definitely share them with us because that's, you know, that's the only reason that we're thinking to look at it this way for today's session. It, it, I, you know, I, it's everything in the Insight Suite is basically powered by feedback. So um, anything you have is, is really helpful. Um, and, and, you know, just to jump in, even, even kind of uh, extrapolating out on what you just did, Brian, you know, you use the same audience, but you can also think about it in ways to start to think about like, okay, I want this, ge I want to look at the top geographies for reaching maybe an age group or an income level and then overlay something and then have overlaid the, a, a different audience, a, a different set of, in, set of inventory that is great at reaching a specific audience. So maybe yeah. you can identify counties or, you know, when we ultimately get their zip codes where there's maybe a lot of high net worth people and you want to find something that, okay, which inventory is best for reaching people that have bought uh, jewelry in the past 30 days or some different thing like that. So 
you're kind of pairing together different different audiences using one to find the geographies and then one that's maybe more specific to a behavior or a characteristic. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I kind of forgot that that was, <laughs> that was a totally different way to yeah. look at it. I was sort of just thinking about it this way, but that's a great point. Yep, yep. So um, again, um, if there are questions, you know, happy to, to answer them as they come up or even after the session's over, always feel free to reach out to us on Geek Out, uh, geekout at geopath.org, which I'll, I'll put that. Um, yeah, here, uh, Scott, I'll, I'll, we'll switch over. Okay, yeah, and, and uh, again, just as we're uh, winding down with the session, um, please feel free to um, to ask us any questions. We can always jump back into the group. Oh, you know, we just got a quick, uh, can, uh, can I map inventory against an audience? Yeah, I'll show how to do that really quick. I kind of talked through that, uh, how I got to this point, but here, let me share my screen again yep. really quick. Yeah, I kind of, I, I talked through this point, but I didn't really show it. So here, let me, uh, I'll show exactly what I, what I did for this one, basically. I'll head back to, again, default view, inventory library. I'm trying to drill that into everybody's heads, just so everybody's aware. Um, so, yeah, so what I did from, for that, uh, I guess I'll set, I'll do, I'll do Connecticut. I'll do the same thing. Um, well, maybe not even, I'll just pick a, I'll pick a DMA. I'll pick something in Connecticut, I guess. Give this a second to catch up to me. Might take a second. Um, here, Scott, you know, do you want to switch back over and I can, I'll, I'll get this all uh, sort of sure. loaded up. Yeah. yeah. So I'll just kind of finish up uh, with some other little housekeeping things and then we'll jump back into the, the tool really quick. Um, but also, too, if there's other questions you think of as, um, as we're, um, you, know, um, you know, ending the session. So just to go back to the earlier question, I know we talked about it already, but here's just a screenshot of what the page looks like. So if you do want to come back and watch this session or any of our other sessions, you can go to our, our website, uh, geopath.org, go to the Geek Out tab. You see that's what's highlighted on the right side and just scroll down to the out-of-home office hours. So our six most recent ones are always there in a the thumbnail, but then as, uh, if you look here on the top, it says, or click here to see our entire library. That brings you to our YouTube channel. You can watch any of the sessions there as well. Um, also too, you know, a lot of this information, uh, why don't I just take uh, time to, to plug our learning lab. I know a lot of you have actually been uh, using this time to, to, to go through it. So that is available to all of our members. Um, there's courses on, they go all the way back to the foundations of media measurement. You know, what is a GRP? Uh, what is, you know, how do you get to, uh, what does universe mean? So some basics, but then it brings you to uh, what is, what is you know, audience segmentation and walks you through how to use the insight suite. So there's similar tutorials on that and then um, lands on a, a, a larger case study. So you can get to that by going to our homepage and just clicking on the button up here on the upper, upper right that says uh, go, to the learning lab. And you can access, quick access to many of our tools from the homepage, but also throughout through the tools tab there. Um, also, I wanna talk about our next month's session. So um, those are gonna be scheduled for the last Thursday and Friday of the month of May, so the 28th and 29th. We're probably gonna get back on that schedule again. I think that helps everybody. You know, I know for the last couple of years, we've been saying the last Thursday and Friday of every month. And, but for the couple, last previous couple of months, we were trying to switch that up a little bit. But I think just uh, maybe going back to that works better for everybody in terms of knowing when the Geopath sessions are always those, those days. And we may evolve that as we get through the year, but want to just jump back to that session. Um, also, if you haven't, um, if you haven't uh, checked it out yet, we've uh, unfortunately, as you all know, we, we had to cancel our conference this year, uh, the, the in-person conference, but we still wanted to make that uh, information available to everybody. So uh, there's the, uh, the virtual conference portal uh, is available and it's at it's go2020outofhome.com. You can go there and uh, there's a lot of great content there. I know a lot of people have been uh, watching some of the videos and we're gonna, gonna continue to upload new content to that uh, site or that portal over the next uh, handful of days as, as uh, more content comes in and we just wanna make it available to everybody. So 
Um, Brian, I, I'll hand it back to you. Yep. Um, yeah, sounds good. Here, let me share okay. my screen. All right. And just um, as you as you're doing that, um, if you have questions, that geek out at geopath.org is a great place to go to to for to ask any questions, and we can help you out with just about anything you need. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, so let me just catch everybody up. So I, I just, uh, I added Connecticut as a whole, uh, or Connecticut as a state I did by County. So that's what we're doing here. Um, and then I didn't add an audience just yet, but I'm going to add that same, uh, bought groceries online. So, um, once you've got a market selected and you've got an audience, oh, not save, sorry, apply. Um, once you've got a market selected and you've added an audience like this, so this is going to catch up to me. Um, but yeah, this is basically just uh, sort of overall how you would map out or how you would uh, represent, you know, an audience against inventory. Um, but then uh, it's taking a second to load, but these three drop downs over here are really these two, I guess, are super useful. Um, so this sort by drop down has a ton of different metrics that you can actually just rank the sort and rank the uh, inventory in the market on. Uh, there we go. So you've got target frequency, target reach, TRPs, uh, target impressions. Um, by default, it's got target composition percentage. Um, so I'll leave that. Um, and so one really good thing, uh, same thing as I did with the top 25 geographies um, based on uh, the geography set I was doing. I can say, let me, let me see the top 100 units based on whatever I set my sort, uh, sort as uh, by, sort by as. And so it should update that. It's just taken a second, but um, let me try to zoom in. So that would be that would be how you go about doing it this way. Um, you would add, you know select your audience, select your market, and then um, you can look at everything at the whole market level. But if you wanted to sort of sort and filter based on a couple other things, you can use these drop downs. I think the tool is just kind of mad at me. I've been doing a lot uh, right now, and I'm <laughs> trying to switch too quickly. But um, yeah, so. Hopefully it lets me get up there, but yeah, that's, that's roughly how you would do that. Um, oh, someone had a question about um, CSV files and that's just uh, a file. It's a file that you can open in Excel, but it's just rather than being separated by tabs, it's separated by commas sort of in its coding, um, but you can open it up uh, right up into Excel, uh, no problem. And if you're in Excel and you want to save something as a CSV, you can do it right from there. If you want to X or if you wanted to import it into the uh, workspace module, like I was showing earlier. Um, yeah, so you can see it's kind of, we've got, oh, I think it's confused about where I am, but yeah, so that would be one way that you could do it. I think it's just kind of, uh, I kind of overwhelmed it. I tried to do a lot of things at once when I was switching over, but yeah, that would be how you'd go about doing that, you know, set an audience, set a market. And then if you wanted to go further and look more specifically, this is a good place to start, uh, using these drop downs. Um, I don't know. Do we have any other questions? Uh, and again, if, if you had a question and, uh, or if you didn't get your question out today, uh, or if you want to ask us later, like Scott said, uh, geek out at geopath.org is a great place for any, any and all questions really. Great. Yeah. So just want to say thank you to everybody and thanks to everybody for, for sticking around so long on, on this session and thanks to Brian for doing the walkthrough. Um, and again, yeah, have a great weekend, everybody. And if you do have other questions, please, uh, please always reach out to us at uh, geekout at geopath.org. So uh, have a great weekend, everyone. Thanks, everybody.